Hey everyone, this is Walter Fate. I'm back to bring you another video. Uh, this is going to be a shit that didn't happen video. I think it's number five. I almost changed what I was going to do. Like, uh, I found a lot of really hilarious posts about Canada's national anthem becoming gender neutral. Uh, I kind of wanted to share those, but... Well, my friend sent me a shit that didn't happen, and there was a lot of really good stuff on the front page of Reddit that happened, so... We're just going to go with this for now. I will start you off with one Canada post, though, because that's just pretty crazy. How stupid. Liberals have taken Canada. Nothing really bad had happened in Canada. However, when countries lose morals, virtues, and decency, things begin to collapse. In due time, let's pray that it would not happen, that people and their government will come to their senses before it is too late. So, as you can see, this is the beginning of the end. This will lead to Canada's apocalypse. Other highlights include people saying helping Puerto Rico is more important. Of course, these people would never be thinking about Puerto Rico otherwise. And people yelling how they'll be singing the original lyrics until the day they die. Now, I don't know much about Canada, but all I had to do was skim one article to find out that these are the original lyrics, and they're actually changing them back. So, it's a lot like the Pledge of Allegiance under God thing. Also, tons of women and Americans are very mad about this change too. Anyway, enough about current events. Let me know in the comments if you'd like videos covering news topics, which will really just be me mocking people's stupid social media posts about them. But with that out of the way, we're going to jump into some things that definitely happened. Trust me on this one. First off, one of my friends sent me this picture she found on a Facebook group that is apparently a goldmine for this kind of shit. My cousin Walter jerked off in public once. True story. He was on a plane to New Mexico when all of a sudden the hydraulics went. The plane started spinning around, going out of control, so he decides it's all over and whips it out and starts beating it right there. So all the other passengers take a cue from him and they start whipping it out, beating like mad. So all the passengers are beating off, plummeting to their certain doom when all of a sudden the hydraulics kick back in and the plane rights itself. It lands safely and everyone puts their pieces, or whatever, you know, away and deboard. Nobody mentions the phenomenon to anyone else. Alright, as you can imagine, I didn't actually do too much research into the science of this. Like, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there are hydraulics on a plane and they're very important. They're supposed to also be very stable, but... You see, it doesn't matter because the reactions are ridiculous. So, I know what you want to ask me. Walter, why were you jerking off on that plane? That's what you want to ask, right? Well, have you ever been about to die? It's like, the plane starts spinning around... There's lights flashing, there's children screaming, and you just think, Man, I was gonna jerk off before I got on this plane, but I forgot, and I just really need one last fab. Well, that was kind of how it was. God, this fucking story, it kind of reminds me of, in one of my first stories, there was the orgy in the office building where the boss came back, everyone put their clothes on in the dark instantly, and just reacted like it never happened. Like, the only thing this story is missing is the part where everyone claps with one hand. Alright, we're going to get into some courtroom shenanigans next. A story from my dad the lawyer. When my dad was in his mid-twenties and just starting out as a lawyer, he had a client who was accused of being a pimp. The client asked him what he should wear to court and my dad says, just normal business clothes. The man showed up in a lavender suit, alligator shoes, and an old school fedora with a feather in it. The jury convicted him in ten minutes. Ah yes, this one would not surprise me if it was like stolen from a sitcom or something. It would be a fairly funny gag, to be fair. But trying to pass it off like it happened in real life is ridiculous. Nobody's that stupid. Also, I don't think that's how the justice system works. I can imagine the judge would think he was a smartass or something. Something bad might happen to him, but you can't exactly convict someone of being a pimp just because they're dressed like one. Even Kramer had to be caught pushing a hooker up against a car to be arrested. But anyway, let's see if I can find any more good true stories for you. Here's one. There were groups of kids in my school that researched how to get temporary diabetes. Once they got diabetes, they would drink as much soda as they could in one day to get a seizure so they could get out of class early. Kids would see this and get jealous and try to do it too. Snitches caught on and would report them to the principal. There would be scheduled mass seizure events, so after a while we had cops and medic teams patrol the classrooms and observe the students. Weird contraptions of sorts to sneak drink soda would be sold around school campus. The kids who sold the devices if they got caught would get arrested, either sent to juvenile detention or jail if they were 18. 
All right, temporary diabetes. I did find articles saying type 2 diabetes can be temporary, but what kind of alternate universe did this happen in? This is a dangerous condition. People meeting up for mass suicides, I mean seizures? To get out of class for a day? The line about having 18 year olds makes me think this was high school. Just fucking skip class if you don't want to go. How hard is it? Okay, this next one is a little difficult to read. And not just because I'm borderline illiterate either, but I'll do it just for my viewers. I was walking down the street one night when I saw a young woman being robbed by four masked men. Now, my dad always told me to be brave and stick up for women, so that's what I did. I went up to the first guy and punched him in the face, knocked him out cold. The second guy tried to pull out his gun on me, but before he could fire, I disarmed him and shot him in the stomach. The other guys fled away in fear. The guy I shot ended up dying in the hospital. The girl I saved was so impressed that she wanted to go out on a date. It's been five years, and now that girl is my wife. Peace and love to y'all. Yeah, yeah, peace and love and all that. Note to all of you, if you see someone getting robbed, don't react like this. Not that I think anyone would in real life, but you're probably going to get yourself and the other person killed. However, this is more like a self-insert fanfiction. The fight even reads like fanfiction. I guess this guy had some white knight fantasy about saving a girl from some armed thugs and decided to pass it off as real on the internet. Of course, he would also have to end up killing one of the criminals, but there's no way that could possibly put a damper on his date. Looks like it was a bit less popular than the comment below deriding it. Huh, imagine that. Now let's keep going and check out another post. My friend boyfriend just called me looking for her. I told him she was asleep on my couch drunk. I said, you want me to wake her up? He said, she right here. I was proving to her that all her friends liars. I was still in character though. I'm like, well who the fuck on my couch? God damn it. No offense, but that's not funny. Those poor emojis are feeling even more abused than usual. And that's saying a lot. Alright. I'm going to stop it here for a second because it has officially been a week since I've drank. So, I'm going to have some of this loco. See you on the other side. Okay, I'm back and better than ever. Let's jump right back into this mess. This next one doesn't explicitly say, but people on Reddit seem to think it's a woman, and it does make a little more sense that way. So this just happened in a park in Ventura County, approximately 12.45 AM. I have a very lovable jet black pit bull that I adore, but he loves to kill vermin and ducks and stuff, so I have to be careful as he's totally one of those dogs that would potentially eat a baby. I take him to a park super late at night and let him run. It's pitch black here under the tree canopy. I'm sitting on a bench by the pond, as per usual. Suddenly a guy on a mountain bike peels off the bike path and comes to a stop right next to me. It was startling. I swear to god he was trying to sound like he was mentally disabled. It sounded like a fake accent. The moon is really cool. Did you know it's a super moon? Cool, huh? Me, silent. Him, are you by yourself out here? Me. Look, asshole, I have a switchblade, a hand axe in my bag, and my pit bull is running around the park killing shit for fun, so there's multiple ways for you to die if you have a preference. And that's it for the story. Maybe the guy was disabled. Or maybe he took some shrooms, I don't know. If so, you probably gave him a bad trip. I am a huge dog person, but I also really like ducks. If I see someone's dog ripping ducks apart, I'm probably going to be annoyed. But mostly that statement just wasn't very intimidating. If it even happened, it's just not a very good story. So let's see if I can find another one. On Ask Reddit, we have a question. Those of you who have had a gun pointed at your face, what did you do to de-escalate? Yeah, that normally might be an okay question, but on the internet, it's a bit of a loaded question. You just fucking know that some tough guy is going to show up and give the dumbest answer possible. Well, ask and you shall receive. Believe it or not, I pressed my forehead against the barrel and told the idiot, Do it, you little fucking bitch. I guess he freaked out that I was crazy and not about to let someone rob me. He ran off with a really bewildered look on his face. Ah uh, yes, not only did this thug decide not to shoot you, but he ran off with a bewildered look on his face. That, that sounds right. 
I mean, you probably should have, like, disarmed him and shot him in the stomach like that other guy. That would have been pretty cool. I don't know how to disarm someone. They didn't teach us that in the army, but... Needless to say, you probably shouldn't act like any of these people said that they'd act on the internet, or did act on the internet. <laughs> I actually haven't had a loaded gun pointed at me, surprisingly enough. But, you know... Anyway, um... I I've got a bit of an announcement to make. I'm gonna do it off camera, because I want to show some visuals, but... It's been great. I would like to thank all my viewers. All the commenters, you all keep me motivated. All the new subscribers, and everyone who's not subscribed, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I will usually respond to people on Twitter. This is my Twitter. I do have a Patreon, but don't feel obligated. I interact with fans either way. My announcement is that if nothing changes, I'm going to be collaborating with Base Shaman on Tuesday. Basically, I'll be on his stream. I think we're going to take some Discord calls, probably answer some questions about incels, because I'm kind of the res resident expert still, I guess. If you don't know Base Shaman, he's a pretty cool guy who is mostly known for covering Elliot Roger and other spree killers, especially school shooters. It's kind of crazy that I can actually now collab with people I was watching way before I started making videos. Well, anyway, that'll be on his channel Tuesday at 6 o'clock Pacific Time. Should be a blast. Come check it out if you can. I'd also like to thank Reddit That Happened, the Something Awful Shit That Didn't Happen thread, and this 4Loco I finally get to drink. Have a great night, everyone.